feathers versus flying bricks, and everything in between. Presenting Wing Cube Loading. It's an easy numeric data point to know how a plane will fly from a floaty versus lead weight standpoint. It isn't a tell-all way to definitively say how a plane will fly to a T, and we'll dig more into why that is and what else makes different planes either fly their missions great or below average. It also doesn't tell you if a Tail Heavy Productions community calendar would look good on your wall, but more on that later. Let's dig into what not only wing cube loading is, but also regular old wing loading and why it's important. So, what determines how an airplane flies? Does it fly fast or slow? Is it stable or twitchy? Easy or hard to fly? Anybody who has flown or even watched at least a couple of airplanes fly knows that lighter airplanes tend to be slower, more stable, and easier to fly than heavy airplanes. And airplanes with larger wings like gliders, trainers, and bush planes tend to be slower, more stable, and easier to fly than planes with tiny wings like jets or racers. Wing loading, without the cube, is the flying weight of the aircraft divided by the total area of the wing. Depending on if you're in America or elsewhere, the units you'll see may be different. Outside of the US, wing loading with RC planes is generally measured in grams per square decimeter. In the US, it's measured in ounces per square foot. So for example, let's look at three very different airplanes and compare them. The FMS Viper 70, the Turbo Timber Evolution, and the FMS ASW-17. All weigh between 60 and 75 ounces but obviously they all have different sized wings. The Timber Evo has a wing loading of 15.4 ounces per square foot, the floaty ASW-17 glider is 13.3, and the Speed Demon Brick Viper is a hefty 31.45. But using wing loading on its own to compare airplanes becomes an issue when you compare different sized airplanes. For example, the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution has a wing loading of 6.39 ounces per square foot, while the regular sized Turbo Timber Evo has a wing loading of 15.4. Anybody who's flown both knows that the smaller one doesn't feel twice as floaty as the big one in the air. If you were to start with the UMX's wing loading and fly that first, and then see the wing loading number for the regular timber, you'd probably be spooked to fly it thinking it would be a brick. To hopefully make this concept easier to grasp, think of this example. If a full-size timber somehow had the same wing loading as the UMX timber, they would both stall at close to the same 1G stall speed, but the UMX would look and feel like it's going faster because it's smaller. As a full-scale comparison, if a Learjet was on final approach at the same speed as a 747 right alongside it to a parallel runway, the Learjet would look like it's going super fast, while the 747 would appear to be going very slow. This is called the cruise ship effect. The reality is, this is one area where wing loading has its limitations in this use. In caveman terms, things just seem to happen faster on a smaller scale. It took 2 hours and 40 minutes for the Titanic to sink, but your drunk uncle flipped over his fishing boat in all of 15 seconds. Since a large part of what makes an airplane harder easy to fly is how quickly things happen, smaller and quicker planes tend to be harder to fly. But if you slow them down with a lower wing loading, then they get easier again. Enter a legit way to compare airplanes, wing cube loading, or WCL for short. What is it? Wing cube loading is a logical way to compare airplanes of different sizes from that feather versus brick comparison we previously mentioned. It's also kind of made up, which we'll get to. Wing cube loading is not an arbitrary criteria used to bash an airplane someone doesn't like, nor does using it in comparisons make someone disingenuous. Wing cube loading is a number that is useful for comparing how aircraft will perform across different sizes. If all airplanes were the same size, then wing loading alone would be all we would need to compare different airplanes, but they aren't, so wing cube loading is a lot more helpful. You can't really calculate anything directly from it, so you won't find it in most engineering textbooks. We found this paper from the Journal of Aeronautics and Aerospace Engineering that explores the relationship a little more scientifically, even though it is not defined as an aerodynamic design parameter. That being said, many RC designers use it as a reference point in our industry, extreme flight and twisted hobbies included. So how do you calculate it? Divide takeoff weight in ounces by wing area in square feet raised to the power of 1.5. What comes out the other end of the equals sign? An easy to comprehend number that generally ranges from two up through 20. Stuff down in the range of two is going to be your super floaty indoor planes, such as a Vapor or a giant-filled helium airliner, or maybe even a very light glider. Normally gliders are usually around four, and as we inch closer to five, we get more into trainers and backyard planes and a great number range to be in for the backyard or RC bush flying niche. Approaching seven through 10, enter sport and 3D planes, and then going north of 10, it becomes aircraft such as Warbirds, Heavy Twins, and even EDF or turbine jets. Knowing all this, let's go over some examples. Let's start with the prior comparison we discussed between the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution and the regular Timber Evolution. The UMX Timber has a wing cube loading of 7.2, 
while the regular has a wing cube loading of 7.8. These numbers are much closer than their respective wing loadings we mentioned earlier, as you may notice. When comparing how they each fly from a floaty versus brick analogy, one would agree that on the wing cube loading scale, both of these planes do feel similar and quite manageable. Now it's time for the infamous wing cube loading comparison, the Turbo Timber Evo versus the Fun Cup. For planes like these, with high wings, flat bottom airfoils, and modest to large control surfaces, we like them best at a wing cube loading of 4 through 6. The Turbo Timber Evolution's wing cube loading is a little below 8, and when flying it in the same confined sights as a much lighter equivalent sized airplane, aka the Fun Cub, you can see the difference right away. The Fun Cub flies much slower, turns tighter, and is easier to maneuver, and has a wing cube loading of 4.2. And remember that Viper from earlier on? It's obviously faster, and it has a wing cube loading of about 22. What's going on here? Small RC planes up through full-scale wide-body jets stall at a slower 1G stall speed when they are at a lower weight. This is because for any given aircraft, your angle of attack, AOA, is higher in unaccelerated flight when heavier. So therefore, when your AOA is higher, it's closer to the critical angle of attack, aka stalling point. For more info on stalls and some of this jargon, check out our stalls video. This is why we are so OCD about bush planes being light. That being said, not all planes fly as they are meant to at this low of a wing cube loading. A pylon racer at a low wing cube loading is probably going to feel slow and boring, and aerobatic planes don't usually tumble very well when they get too floaty. Wing cube loading is a very helpful number to know, but it's not everything. It doesn't account for airfoils, control surface size, drag, thrust, tail length, or stabilizer size, for example. A Corsair with a wing cube loading of 10 is going to be a lot harder to fly than a Quickie 500 pylon racer also at 10. The Twisted Hobbies Crack Fokker is a very aerobatic airplane, and it has a wing cube loading of 1.2. And the Turbo Bushmaster, which pretty much everybody agrees is a gentle and easy to fly plane, has a wing cube loading of 10. Really, wing cube loading is just a more accurate way to think about wing loading. So next time you get suspicious when you hear somebody say that their pride and joy is real floaty, look at the whole picture before you whip out your tape measure and scale and use them to smash down their tower of lies. But whether you want to know if your scratch-built giant-scale Fun Cub will be as floaty as the original, or if your Park Flyer P47 will be as much of a brick as the giant-scale original, wing cube loading will help to clear up that mystery. Just be sure to remember its limitations and not hold the number against a plane you may be buying. Some planes fly better with a little added wing cube loading, and some fly better with less. As a quick channel update, congrats to Autumn Sound 2 for winning our November photo contest on our Discord with this awesome shot of their twin timber and slow ultra stick. Now that we've reached December, the 2023 photo contest is officially a wrap, and we are excited to announce the launch of our tail heavy 2024 community calendar featuring all of this year's photo contest winners. We are selling pre orders for the calendar for $29.99 with free shipping, linked in the description below and in the pinned comment. The calendar should be ready to ship before Christmas. There won't be a photo contest in December since we used one of our own photos for it and to take a break for the holidays, but the contest will pick back up again in January. If you want to participate, join our Discord for a fun, positive, supportive community, and submit your best airplane photos taken in January 2024 there. The winner gets a free limited edition sticker and has their photo featured in both a video and in next year's annual Tail Heavy community calendar. Happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.